Men. What are some great movies that go over the relationship between father slash son? Oh man of the house. The Chevy Chase one is a fun examination of what it means to step up as a dad. The Tommy Lee Jones one is more about a dad learning that control isn't necessarily parenting. Though it's more geared towards daughters. Not the obvious choice but, Dr. Sleep. There are two scenes which allow Danny to address his relationship with his father, the Alcoholics Anonymous monologue is beautiful. It's crazy how the movie manages to reconcile TGs which would be impossible to reconcile, e.g. The original Shining and its movie adaptation. The Christmas Story Christmas. I know Christmas Story Christmas did not have Ralphie's dad since he's dead. But the movie did make me cry because of the impactful message it had about the importance of being a dad and having a dad. Ralphie went from being a kid who wanted a BB gun more than anything of the world to now being a leader of his own family and the new man of house who wants to make Christmas special for his family just the way his dad made it special when he was a kid. That was the real Christmas story sequel we deserved than that atrocious sequel we had back in 2012. Maybe more of a cinematic masterpiece than a movie. But the God of War franchise from 2018 and the recent Gal Ragnarok really brought back memories from my childhood and made me realize my father could have done a lot better and tried harder. I know it was just a video game. And I didn't even play it I watched Jacksepticeye play it. But man that was an emotional roller coaster at times. I won't lie at all. I cried a few times. May not be a movie. But since I spent the better part of 10 hours watching it on each game it gave me the same experience. What is the most important lesson life has taught you? I would say life has taught me two important lessons. One, you can't miss what's for you. The people, places, and things that are meant to be in your life always have a way of reappearing. Two, relationships don't have to last forever to be beautiful and good. You had seven years of friendship. Just because it ends doesn't mean it wasn't real or that the love between you didn't exist. All dynamics are a true reflection of the relationship one has with themselves. People change and most importantly so do you. And if they are meant to be a part of your life they will reappear like I said in number one. Kindness will always win. It is extremely important for me to have kind thoughts and to let my actions also reflect that. People go through so much pain and trauma. And if I can be a little bit of light for someone in this world, then that is what I want to do. I suffer greatly from depression. And sometimes the only way to keep myself sane is to reach out and help another person who may also be suffering. Be kind. Always. You don't have to stay in bad relationships of any kind. Romantic. Work. Family. Friends. It's okay to intentionally leave those. Also. Don't wait to do things you want to do until the right time. Single and no friends can go but want to go on a trip? Do it alone. Think you need to wait for retirement? Don't take your health for granted. Do those things while you're healthy and physically able. I read somewhere to make bucket lists in 5 years windows. Do the most important ones first. Don't save a list of 20 things for someday because that day is not guaranteed. If you love someone, tell them that as often as you can. Don't waste time worrying about people you barely know. I'm your personal experience. How do young children deal with death of a parent? Hi personal experience. I'm, dead, dad. As someone who is currently going through this. Let them be. They will have their own way of dealing with it and as long it's not harmful in any way that is okay. You also need to be very open about the situation. Yes it might be difficult but it may be even harder on the kids if they can't come to terms with it. Also as a boy I know that if you have a son he will either be very open or will deal with it in his own way. Either not talk about it and keep his emotions to himself or he will be very vocal. My dad died when I was 6. I saw his body and couldn't really understand it. Not even when he was buried. I'm 30 now. Over the years there have been moments where I realized that I grew up without anything you'd learn from a father and also that Teresa really important person missing in the house. Many times it made me really sad and kind of depressive but over time I felt like I have to deal with it somehow. I needed a lot of talking with friends and family to get to know him since I only had a 6 year memory of him. Within the past 2 years or so I have found some peace and kind of accepted it. He lives on as a short but loving memory. Not sure if this counts. But my dad died when I was a year and a half old. Obviously that's a little different. Since I don't really remember him. However, I still miss him. It hits me a lot how my life would be different if my dad didn't die and I try to get out to the cemetery as often as possible. My family told me stories about him while I was growing up, and gave me a little photo album full of pictures of him. If you can, keep a lockbox of some of his stuff, wedding ring, photos, a camera with videos of him on it, etc., and share that with your kids as they grow. Don't be afraid to share your memories of him with them. Those who do not drink alcohol and want to avoid sugary drinks. What drink do you order in a bar? Tonic and splash of cranberry is a pretty easy go-to, and it looks exactly like cranberry vodka tonic. Which is nice that people don't bother yo with why aren't you drinking an apos. Sugar technically isn't fattening in isolation. Needs to be put into context of overall caloric intake versus expenditure. But maybe a lime juice of sorts? I don't go to bars anymore. But if having a meal at a pub or something I'll get a smoothie or milkshake if they do them. But if they don't I'll just have an orange or apple juice. Similar to the top comment but rock shandy, soda water with a good splash of lemonade, the same amount you would put in a lager dash, then a bit of lime cordial, or better still crushed fresh lime 
and a bit of Angostura bitters. Also the world's best hangover cure for those that do partake. When I was bartending slash cocktail making I always kept multiple mocktail recipes up my sleeve for just this reason. Depending on the bar, I'd ask the bartender, just say you're DDing and they'll usually make them for free. Mocktails. I ask them to unleash their inner artist to make me a custom mocktail. They'll usually ask you for some guidelines. Tell them you want something dry. If you're at a nice cocktail bar the bartenders usually pride themselves on their creativity. This isn't a good idea if they're super busy but I've found that bartenders usually enjoy it. The key is that I approach them like you're James Bond and they're the Picasso of mixology. And tip well. I approach drinking alcohol like an Olympic sport but if I'm driving I have a tonic water or bitter lemon. Both of which I normally have with gin. They're sharp enough to enjoy as opposed to the sugar slash saccharin of lemonade. Pepsi. Coke. Etc.